once hypothetical antibiotic winter, a scenario where all available antibiotics are ineffective, is now becoming an increasingly real threat. As dramatic as it sounds, there is a real urgency for the development of alternatives to antibiotics, not just for the treatment of disease, but for the production of safe foods. The problem with antibiotics is the more we use them, the more resistance we're going to see. When you take antibiotics, they indiscriminately wipe out any susceptible bacteria, leaving behind only the ones with resistance. The selective nature of antibiotics is why we are now in need of alternatives to them, which brings us to bacteriophages, phages for short, which are bacteria-specific viruses. The whole reason phages infect bacteria is for replicating. Viruses are unique to other microbes in the fact that they are incapable of replicating independently. In other words, they require a host. When they're infecting a host, what's really happening is they're hijacking the bacterium's gene replication and protein expression machinery to manufacture replicates of themselves. They continue this process until the cell has completely exhausted itself, followed by a fatal lysing event that releases the newly synthesized phages while simultaneously killing the bacterium. This continues until there are no more susceptible cells to infect. The phenomenon of using phages to treat bacterial infections is known as phage therapy. However, like antibiotics, phage therapy is still susceptible to resistance. So how do we mitigate this issue of resistance? In our case, what we've done is we've taken a colicin gene from E. coli. A colicin is a type of bacteriosin, or microbial toxin, that is produced by and targets some strains of E. coli and we've inserted the colicin gene into the DNA of a lytic phage known as T7, resulting in a genetically engineered phage that co-expresses a colicin. Our engineered phage was then introduced to a population comprised of resistant and sensitive bacteria. As the phage infects the sensitive cells, its replication cycle now includes the production of the colicin. This continues until the lysing event, which now releases both the phage replicates and the colicins to the nearby cells. The only way a bacterium would be able to survive this treatment is if they acquired resistance not only to the phage, but also to the colicin. So we tested this idea out, and what we saw was resistance was at the very least hindered, but in some cases, completely inhibited. Regardless of colicin type or ratio of resistant to sensitive cells, demonstrating a double hurdle approach that reduces the selective pressure of conventional phage therapy by engineering a phage to express a colicin that targets resistant cells.